Looks like rune chants are back on the menu, boys. These last few days, Viscerae has been seemingly everywhere in Classic Instructed. It's due to two things this last week, Jermai's LL and Adam Cook's win of the ProQuest at Chupacabra Games. And now, the deck is freaking everywhere. Functionally, it's simply a well-teched update of the old Big Swing Viscerae lists of the olden days. But if you don't know what it's doing, and how to play into it, you'll be buried in self-propagating rune chants. So in today's video, I'm doing a 10,000 foot view on how the deck works, so that you can have a fighting chance against a pile of rune chants backed up by an 11 dominate. A huge shout out to our channel members for supporting what we do here. If you want to get involved with the channel and the Dice Commando community, please consider joining as a channel member. Remember, these videos are only possible with your support. You can show that support with a like, a subscribe, and by leaving us a comment and sharing your feedback. Community first, and go Commando! If you've been playing on Talishar at all over these last few days, you've likely seen the huge spike in the number of Viscerais flying around. As I mentioned in the intro, this is for a couple of reasons. First is that with Jeromai going away, it helps to open up more play paths with the Purple Dude. Second, and I believe more impactful to the short-term interest, is the ProQuest win last weekend by Adam Cook. Adam piloted his updated take on Big Swing Viscerai, or whatever name the fab community has chosen to give it this hour, I've heard Turtle Burst tossed around, but he piloted it to victory. And Big Swing Viscerai, even using cards like Slogism, certainly isn't completely new. In fact, it was one of the preferred ways to play Viscerai in the pre-Everfest days. In fact, as we go through today's cast, I may inevitably refer to Billy's. Billy is one of the PDX local players, and one of the best Viscerai players in Portland, and I learned a lot about this style of deck back in the day from him. Now, today is not a deck tech on Adam Cook's deck. His winning deck is featured on fabtcg.com, it's public info. I am not claiming to know the reason behind ratios, one-ofs, or anything of the sort. Nor am I pretending that I can speak to his, or any other Viscerai mains, level of intelligence on the subject. For that, I'd like to send you over to the Goblin Reserve, who interviewed Adam a few weeks back. It's a good chat, on a good channel, and I had the chance to meet the Goblin Reserve team in Queenstown, and you should go check their stuff out. The purpose of today, rather, is to outline, at a high level, what the deck is trying to do so that folks who run up against it in these next few weeks, perhaps for the first time, know what's going on. So as we go through today's video, please be sure to leave your thoughts and your advice to others below, and if you haven't, just a reminder to toss the channel a sub. Now, at a very high level, the concept of the deck is this. Spend a few turns defending and building up a pile of runies and then come in with a big attack presenting pumped physical damage backed up with that big pile of rune chants. Viscerai is of course best suited for this strategy, given both his ability to poop out additional rune chants, and of course his specialization, Arachnite Ascendancy, which not only has Dominate, but threatens rune chants on the back end for any bled damage. The deck runs Scepter of Pain, not a great weapon in a vacuum, but used here as the inherent idea being that activating it doesn't trigger the rune chants, and it either pulls a card from your opponent's hand, or pings for one and adds to the rune champ pile. The deck plays a good number of rune champ builders, many of which are pretty self-explanatory. Runeblood Incantation is of course a strong tool due to its inherent go again, assuming a follow-up builder it triggers Viscerai's ability. Reed and Blessing of course are their own turns, but Sonata in the right situation also provides a go again and an additional Viscerai trigger. And of course, Reduced to Rune Chant is a staple D-React, doing basically the best of both worlds. Start this off with Old Reliable Mordred Tide, creating an additional each time, and you're cooking. Now we come to the attacks. Not a ton of them in the deck, but with the strategy, they can be very lethal. Amplify is a solid threat, often coming in for free and threatening a minimum of 6 physical with the pile. This is also a 2, making it a potential pummel threat. Dread Triptych, while not strong on its own, is a producer as well as an attack. It has the potential to create 4 rune chants on its own, 3 from itself, with a 4th coming in from Viscerai, and can create a very tricky blocking situation for the opponent. And then of course there's Ninth Blade. While certainly a super scary thing in of itself on the upside potential, practically it's not the primary threat. That threat of course is Arachnite Ascendancy. Arachnite Ascendancy not only has Dominate, but threatens rune chants on the back end for any blood damage. Now on the surface it's a little unassuming. Sure, it can come in for free, but it only threatens 5 physical. But this is where the pumps come in. A pump into Ascendancy, making all of the sudden a large dominated attack with the backfill, led with a pile, makes life all of a sudden really really scary. Runic Reckoning is effectively free, and triggers a rune chant off of Viscerite. 
Slogism, while expensive, paired with the Dominate on Ascendancy is really threatening, as each point of physical damage pumped essentially counts double duty with the Runechant backfill. And while Come to Fight isn't an Adam Cook's deck, it is another common one used in this scenario in the vein of Runic Reckoning. It also defends for 3 and is a very attractive card that we'll often see play in this build. So while that outlines the general concept, the deck doesn't stop there. It has tricks, oh yes, it has tricks. Become the Arknight serves not only to trigger Viscerite, but also to tutor what is needed at the right time, effectively serving as an additional copy of the key cards. And then there's Rattlebones, oh disgusting little Rattlebones, allowing for recursion of those key attack action pieces. The only way to make sure those pieces are gone is to get them in the banner zone if you even can. And then to cap it all off, Looming Doom. While in of itself not a huge threat, it does serve as a potential ender. Often with Viscerai, the correct take to battle is AB1, meaning that, even after they've exhausted all of their attacks, they can continue to chip away for one each turn, for those last few health points. Looming Doom is by no means an ultimate, but it does present just one more little trick that you need to be aware of and watch out for. Do you bring AB2 and leave armor on the table? No, I don't think so. You need that armor to help with ascendancy blocks, but it does mean you need to watch your health totals if you're on AB1. In playing against this deck, the key is to protect yourself against Arknight Ascendancy's backfill. First, remember that they can often play this for free. A two-card hand, one to pitch to Slogism and one to play, can be an 11 Dominate Ascendancy. And, while the tendency with Blues in hand is to often spend them on the Rune Chance, remember that the key here is to stop the physical. Because Arknight Ascendancy's physical damage effectively counts double with the backfill, the better value off a blue 3 block is often to block physical in this particular case. Furthermore, you know this card is natural dominated. As such, it's a good idea to keep a D-React or an Oasis in your arsenal. Again, that's a lot of value that you save with each point of damage prevented. To that end though, don't forget about Pummel. Watch the cards in hand. Pummel works with all the relevant attacks, and with potential cost reductions on the attacks, it can be a sneaky play that catches you off guard. Adam Cook's deck is running one, but there's potential for more, so just count the cards. And remember, of course, to keep checking that discard. As you're putting on pressure while they are building up, keep track of the attack actions they've spent, and also don't forget about Rattlebones. It can help you plan for what's left and how much you can put yourself out there. Last, remember that this deck works with the ebb and flow of build, build, swing. Keep track of the rune chance. Six is generally the magic number to which you need to be aware that they might be shifting from build to swing. Anyone who saw what Viserae could do during skirmish season following Everfest has known that the day would come where Viserae got gross once again. Is now that time? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But either way, knowing how this deck works and how to best position against it is going to be a key to your success as this new meta flushes itself out. Thanks for listening, and go Commando, my friends.